This is a vlog about atoms. Okay, we good. What's going on, everybody? So, the atom is one of the hardest units for me to teach because atoms are absolutely impossible to see. They, you can't see atoms. You can't even see them with a microscope. So let's go through a brief history of the atom and the model that we have to sort of envision what the atom is all about. So first, there was this guy named Democritus. One of his major accomplishments and what he's really known for in chemistry is his theory of atomos. The theory is if you take something like anything, really a piece of paper, and you cut it in half, and you cut it in half again, and you cut it in half again, Eventually, you will get to the point where you can't cut that object anymore. The thing is, this model isn't all wrong. Kind of like a paper airplane, as a model of a real airplane. It's not wrong, it's just that it's so far away from the actual thing that it doesn't really do us any good in practicality. Democritus' idea, it was, it, it honestly, like the baseline of it, the, the foundation of his idea holds true. There are small, naturally indivisible particles that make up the universe, but there was so much more to it than just that there are small little particles. Next up, we got Mr. John Dalton. John Dalton really fleshed out Democritus' theory. It came up with five major points. So after Dalton came up with those five points, there was another scientist that came along on the scene, Mr. J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson was doing experience with something called a cathode ray tube. What he observed in this experiment was that this beam of electricity, that's really what it was, would repel and bend away from a negatively charged magnet, but go towards a positively charged magnet. And in doing this, he, he recognized that this, these, these particles that made up this beam of electricity, they had to be negative. Because no matter how hard you try, you can't put two things of the same charge together. You can't do it. I'm trying so hard. We have J.J. Thompson's new discovery of the electron. Now, he was able to determine through looking at the angle at which the beam was bending versus the charge, he basically figured out a charge to mass ratio, which led to the discovery that this particle was actually 2,000 times smaller than a hydrogen atom. It's crazy, which basically means that J.J. Thompson discovered the first subatomic particle. So now we have the atom and then a tiny little electron that's somehow involved. J.J. Thompson proposed the idea of what he called the plum pudding model of the atom in which the electrons were stuck inside this blob of positive charge like a plum pudding, which is a British dessert. And it has little bits of fruit inside of this cake-like thing. I never have actually had it. Think of like fruit jello. That's a way easier way to look at it. Fruit jello. So to test Thompson's idea, the next scientist on this timeline, Ernest Rutherford, decided to fire these positively charged alpha particles. So Ernest Rutherford was, was experimenting with this gold foil and he fired alpha particles, positively charged alpha particles. It was radiation. 
And the idea was, these are like little atom bullets, and he was gonna see how they would collide or whatever. He wasn't sure. Um, he predicted that they would go through the gold foil, given that it's really thin and that the, the atoms are actually neutral. So there wouldn't really be anything solid enough to stop these little mini, like almost like bullets uh, on the atomic level at least. And so when he was firing these alpha particles of the gold foil, what he observed was profound, it's crazy. Instead of all the particles going straight through, most of them went straight through the gold foil, but a few of them bounced back. The fact that some of them bounced to the side or even almost backwards or diagonally or like straight, almost like a right angle. The fact that they were colliding in this way, not all the time, but only, you know, once every few thousand hits. The fact that this was happening meant that they had to be something really dense, really, really dense, right somewhere like right in the middle of the atom. This he called the nucleus what we now call the nucleus. It's this really dense positive charge. It also means that the atom has tons of empty space. This is insane, like so much empty space. It's so much empty space, I can't really explain it. I actually have to show you. So I am going to show you how much empty space there actually is in the atom. It's gonna be amazing. So to help me illustrate how much empty space actually is in an atom, my friend is gonna help me out here. My friend over the downtown, my man, Kevin Gilman. Kevin, show us the nucleus. Boom, yes. If this is the nucleus, I'm gonna show you where the nearest electron would be. Okay, so this is the electron. Is this how far it's gonna be from the nucleus? What about this? What about this? Okay, so it's definitely not even close to how far away the electron actually is. What's up, dude? <laughs> it's way farther. We're gonna go on a little journey right now. Let's go. is how far away the first electron would be if the nucleus were at the downtowner and were the size of that tangerine. This is how far. It'd be about one kilometer away. So that just gives you a sense of scale for how much empty space actually is in the atom. It's ridiculous, it's crazy. I did good, made it back in time for lunch, or to finish lunch. Whew! So good! So I'm gonna stop here with up to the Rutherford atom. What we know is that atoms are the fundamental building block of the universe, but there is one particle that is smaller than atoms called the electron that is negatively charged that orbits or surrounds the nucleus in some way, which we will talk about in a later video. 
The nucleus is the center of the atom and it's super dense, super dense, and the atom is mostly empty space. Tangerine nucleus, one kilometer away, would be the nearest electron. Crazy. So, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I'm trying to keep these videos going for everybody. Students, teachers, anybody who wants to learn something, hopefully have some fun doing so. I just love making these videos. So thank you for your time. Have a blessed day.